We are standing amongst a rare set of tapestries that depict the triumph of the Eucharist, which are based on a series of modelli that Peter Paul Rubens had created in around 1620. The set of tapestries were the gift of Grandmaster Ramon Perelios when he was elected in 1697, because every Grandmaster was obliged, according to the statutes of the order, to give a gift to the conventual church. Ramon Perelios wanted to give a gift that would outshine all the other Grandmasters. And he also wanted this gift to express the devotion that the Knights had to the Catholic faith and also the exuberance of his reign. They consist of 29 pieces and they were made to line the interior of the nave. One can only imagine how dazzling this set of colorful and dramatic depictions were on the worshipper as he entered the church. The tapestries were ordered around 1698 from the Atelier Judeco de Vos. He was a well-known contractor and weaver of tapestries. There is over 700 square meters of tapestry here, which was completed by 1702. So that means that Judeco de Vos must have had a series of weavers who cooperated together to produce the set simultaneously. The outstanding feature of this series is the sheer size of it because it lined the whole perimeter of the church, which measures 52 meters in length and 15 meters wide. They are made out of pure wool and silk and they encompass some of the most beautiful colors. The Infanta Isabella Clara Eugenia, the Archduchess of the Spanish Netherlands, commissioned Peter Paul Rubens to create the series of tapestries for her favorite cloistered nuns, the Descalques Real Monastery in Madrid. And at that time, in the 1620s, the theme of the Eucharist was very important because it had been challenged by the Protestants and in fact it had been rejected. The Eucharist is the mystery of transubstantiation, which means the real presence of Christ at the time and the mystery of the sacrament during Holy Mass, where bread and wine come to represent the body and blood of Jesus Christ. She wanted to give a gift that would give a prominence to this mystery, to the mystery of the triumph of the Eucharist. An interesting fact is that Grandmaster Ramon Perelios ordered the set of tapestries 70 years later, and that shows that the triumph of the Eucharist theme was still important at the end of the 17th century, enough for him to order a set with the same allegorical figures. The 29 pieces are distributed in two different types. There is the small narrow pieces which depict the apostles and also the image of the Virgin Mary and Jesus Christ. And then there are 14 large tapestries. They measure six meters by almost seven meters. Seven of them tell the life of Christ, starting from his birth all the way to his resurrection. And then there are another six pieces which depict the triumphs of the Catholic faith. And they are told in the form of allegories. One last tapestry depicts the Grand Master himself. It is a portrait of him. It is a true likeness of his image. And it hung above the main door as you left the church. Therefore, you wouldn't forget Grand Master Perellos. The tapestries bear the Grand Master's coat of arms, the name of the weaver, Judacos, and the city mark of Brussels, which is the city in which they were made. The tapestries are enclosed in a fictitious frame of laurel leaves, which are a symbol of peace and victory. And at the top, they are carried by a festoon of exotic fruit, which are a symbol of the exuberance of the Grand Master's reign. 
St. John's Tapestry series shows some compositional departures from Rubens' original modelli. Yet, the tapestries immediately display Rubens' recognizable key characteristics. Kaleidoscopes of ruby-red satins, opulent gold brocades and sparkling zephyr blue skies. The action-packed scenes have his signature whirlwind of twisting bodies and luxuriously clothed females. The tapestries also capture the force of expression and dramatic spirit of this great Antwerp artist. These particular features are all the more important because the St. John set was the largest as well as the last synthesis of Rubens' artistic contribution to tapestry production. The tapestry that depicts the triumph of the Catholic Church is perhaps the most important. From the series of allegories, this is one of the most stunning pieces. It depicts the triumph of the Catholic Church with the tumultuous composition focusing on Ecclesias, personified by a woman representing the church triumphantly riding a gold chariot drawn by four horses, led by personifications of the cardinal virtues, prudence, fortitude, temperance and justice. An angel descends from the skies and is about to place the papal tiara on Ecclesia's head. In front, another angel carries the keys under a canopy, the emblem of her divine power and absolute supremacy. She is also accompanied by the allegories of fame, represented by angels blowing their trumpets. Victory holds a laurel wreath in her hand, whilst peace holds an olive branch. A blindfolded man in rags follows the chariot. He is the symbol of moral and spiritual blindness, hence ignorance and sin. Ecclesia is strengthened by the possession of the Holy Eucharist, as her chariot tramples over evil and opens the way to righteousness and eternal glory. The fine draftsmanship and the opulent colors used here is really the epitome of Baroque art. Grandmaster Ramon Perelios took a particular interest in his portrait. The archives show letters that he wrote to the agent in Brussels discussing the portrait. And apparently, a number of images were exchanged between Malta and Brussels. The Grandmaster, dressed in his simple knight's robe, is sitting on a throne. He is wearing a long magistral wig, and he is accompanied by the allegory of the order, which is Minerva, who under her feet tramples Moorish slaves. With his other hand, we can see that the Grand Master is distributing alms to the poor, and he is known that periodically the Grand Master would walk the streets of Valletta, giving out alms to the poor. The tapestries were ready at the beginning of 1702 and are known to have arrived around February. The Grand Master, anxious to have the tapestries return safely to Malta, sent the chaplain of the order over to Brussels to accompany them and make sure that the voyage was safe. The anxiously awaited gift and their subsequent display in the church would have been the cause of much celebration and pomp. The tapestries lining the perimeter of the church, extolling the triumph of the Eucharist and the life of Christ, must have been mesmerizing. They were the last expression of the night's exuberance and spirituality.